guys, this is Jen from over at worldofgencraft.com and this is our project for today. So just a little side note before I get started, I am having to do a voiceover because I forgot to turn my microphone on when I started recording my video and of course I didn't realize it until I started editing and had no sound. So bear with me as we get through this together, hopefully. Um, so I use the beautiful Peacock stamp set, which is a celebration item. And when you purchase $50 now through March 31st, you could choose this among quite a few other items uh, free with your order. This stamp set was a little bit out of my comfort zone. Um, I kind of struggle with images that I have to put together in order to create an image, if that makes sense. Kind of like putting a puzzle together. Um, and I love puzzles, but these types of sets just really kind of take me out of my comfort zone. But I think it did turn out pretty darn sweet um, after all. So let's get to the supplies and I will show you how I put this together. It's a pretty simple card. Again, the beautiful peacock is what I used and it has quite a few different images. Um, a couple of the little swirlies and the flowers, they could be used separately as background stamps. The hexagons embossing folder, of course, this is one of my favorites. For ink, I used Soft Sky, Tranquil Tide, and Lemon Lime Twist. This card has no ribbon, no extra embellishments. It's basically just a paper and ink, which is a little out of my comfort zone as well, but you know, got to step out of there every once in a while. So the cardstock that I used is a Whisper White card base this time, and it is a five and a half by eight and a half. I used the thick Whisper White for the piece that I'm embossing, so that's a four by five and a quarter. A three by four and a quarter to stamp our image, and you'll also need a scrap for stamping out just the body of the peacock. Lemon Lime Twist is four and a quarter by five and a half and a scrap for the wing. Tranquil Tide is three and three eighths by four and five eighths. And Soft Sky is three and one eighth by four and three eighths. I'm going to go ahead and just jump into the stamping for this card. And the first thing that I'm going to do is I was kind of debating on which stamp I wanted to stamp out first. Um, I should have started off with the Tranquil Tide, but I opted not to do it, and I went with the Soft Sky for the back portion of his uh, plumes, I guess. Now, I did find it a little bit more difficult to line up the body with the wings by doing it this way. So if you have this stamp set, or if you plan on earning it for free during celebration, I would highly recommend that you start with the darker image and then stamp the lighter image as it's easier to line up that way. You can see the lines better. So you'll kind of see me struggling a little bit with lining it all up. Um, and then I finally just kind of gave up on, on trying to make it perfect because I really couldn't see what I was doing and I just ended up stamping down and kind of holding my breath and hoping it turned out halfway decent so there we go hopefully here shortly yep and it didn't turn out too bad it was slightly off but I, I went ahead and kept it the way it was so I'm going to go ahead and stamp out on the lemon lime twist cardstock and of course your scrap doesn't need to be this large but it's just what I had in my stash that I pulled out for the video all you'll need is just a small piece to stamp out the peacock's body on it. And we'll be cutting that out a little bit later just for the wing. So I'm going to pull out my Lemon Lime Twist ink pad. And we're going to go ahead and stamp out the rest of the feathers. I used the curved stamp first for this part. And I lined up the very edge of the stamp with the very bottom of the peacock's body. And then just kind of finding a right angle for it and stamp down. And then I'm going to bring out the longer plumes or feathers. And this is going to get stamped keeping that very edge of the stamp where I started the first one. 
and moving it up just slightly and then stamping it down and we're going to do one more and this one is going to go a little bit farther down but just up from the bottom of the image piece that I used. The next stamp that I'm going to pull out is the little dots. Now just kind of a little bit um, on this you need to tap ever so lightly on the pad to avoid getting the ink on there like I did. Now, if you if you barely stamp down, you can avoid getting that extra ink on there. You just have to be really careful when you do that. And I'm going to line up so those three dots at the top there that are all lined up, they're going to go in to those little kind of feathery places. And it's, it was a little bit harder to see where I was stamping because of that extra ink on the stamp. So I think I ended up just kind of stamping down and calling it good. <laughs> and that didn't turn out too bad. Now this next one was a little bit harder for me because I couldn't remember exactly how I did it the first time. So... I've kind of flipped the stamp around a few times and finally got to a place where I just went ahead and stamped down on it. It was kind of hard to line up and see where I was going with it, so that worked. Now, I was going to ink it up another time and then decided against it. And all I'm going to do on this one is ink up one singular dot. And I found that when I did that, I had a better placement because um, then I wasn't having to worry about all the other dots on there. I could specifically pick out where I wanted to add a dot. And it just worked out a little bit better. So... Then I'm going to go ahead and stamp in the little center of those white spaces on the back feathers of his. And then stamp down in where the, uh, the little feathers are kind of at that little point on each of those. I did try to put some sparkles on there, some little sparkles but I kind of liked the contrast of the Tranquil Tide ink versus the sparkles. But the sparkles turned out really beautiful as well. So you could certainly do that instead of having to try to line up all of those little dots in there. Because that can be a little tedious. I'm just going to stamp out the body onto my scrap of Whisper White. And throw on my sentiment. Because I did not forget to do that. That's just going to kind of go up into that empty space up there in the corner. And that is it for that part of the image. So the next thing that I'm doing is I'm taking the two pieces that I had stamped out and I'm just going to cut around the body. Now I did not worry about all of the little details. I cut the feet off. I cut the plumes off. And I even cut his little beak off, so that just kind of made it easier to cut out. Everything else is stamped underneath of it, so I didn't feel like I needed to cut out every single detail. I ran my Tranquil Tide marker just around the edges. I feel that that helps give a little bit more finished look so I don't have white edges from where I cut. Oh yes, my, my messy fingers. <laughs> and then this one, I'm just going to cut out that wing part from the Lemon Lime Twist card stock. And I have no idea what I'm talking about at this point, but I did grab out some mini glue dots. And I found that with the mini glue dots, it kind of raises that piece up just a little bit instead of using a full-size Stampin' Dimensional to raise it. 
Um, it just kind of gives a nice little extra dimension in there instead of just using your regular adhesive that would allow it to lay a little bit flatter. And I'm taking just one Stampin' Dimensional and putting that on his body. And then I'm going to grab out a second one, but I'm going to cut it down so it's teeny tiny just to go underneath of his head. When I first put this card together, I did try it without a dimensional underneath of his head, but it just kind of seemed to float, and I wanted it to be more secure down onto the paper. This was not quite small enough, so once I finally got it on, I did have to go back with my scissors and cut off just a little piece of it that was showing out from underneath of it. Because you don't want your dimensionals to show out from underneath. No one wants to see that, right? <laughs> All right. So that's just going to get stuck directly on top of his body. And you don't have to do this part. If you didn't want to have his body popped up like that, you could certainly just stamp it down. And then if you wanted to, you could possibly color in his wing with a, a lemon lime twist marker. Or you could go ahead and stamp them out and just cut the wing out and stamp it on there. So I just like the extra dimension. Um, I have a hard time with images that just lay flat on the page, but it was still beautiful. So know that you don't have to go to that much trouble to, um, to do this card. So my Whisper White is just going to go on to the Soft Sky, and then that's going to get adhered onto the Tranquil Tide. And the four by five and a quarter piece of Whisper White is going to be embossed. Now one thing that I have discovered recently, I've never been a huge fan of the thick Whisper White cardstock. Whenever I use Whisper White on a project, I almost always use the regular Whisper White. However, I have discovered lately that when you use the thick Whisper White, it does give a better impression with the embossing folder. So I do recommend, if you have it, to use that when you emboss. The other thing that you can do is you can also mist your paper ahead of time, just with a fine mist on the front and back. And with those dynamic textured embossing folders, it really does make a big difference when you wet it down. So I'll show you the difference in another tutorial next time I use one of those embossing folders. So that's just going to go on to our... Uh, Lemon Lime Twist cardstock, and that will be adhered onto our Whisper White card base. I used to use strictly Whisper White card bases on all of my cards, and then I just decided to start using the colored cardstock instead because then I felt like there wasn't as much paper wasted. I wasn't going through Whisper White like I was. However, I'm running out of the Lemon Lime Twist cardstock, and I did need to try to save that instead of using it as a full card base. So I just went back to using the Whisper White for my base, which makes it a little bit better when you go to write your sentiment on the inside, or you can um, just leave it blank, or you can decorate it, or whatever you want to do, but it it gives a little bit more to play with. I am going to add quite a few Stampin' Dimensionals to the back of my Tranquil Tide cardstock. I love having it uh, sturdy like that. Instead of just putting it in one in each quarter um, corner, I do prefer to put quite a few on the back. And that's just going to go kind of catty corner or catty wonkus or whatever you want to call it, on the card front. The last and final thing that I am doing, and as always, you don't need to do it, but I am rushing some Wink of Stella onto it. Now, if you'll notice, the cardstock does darken up a little bit when the Wink of Stella is brushed onto it, but that does dry just fine. It it kind of worried me at first. I didn't want to have this dark splotchy spot on my cardstock, but it does dry. 
The one thing that you will want to look out for when you are brushing the Wink of Stella onto the ink is the ink will come up onto your brush. And so if you're going to do this, you'll want to brush it onto the cardstock first and then the inked portion afterwards. So that is our card for today. I thought it turned out pretty darn sweet. So as always, I will have dimensions and a supply list at worldofgencraft.com that you can hop on over there and print and download if you so wish. So thank you so much for stopping by and I will check you on my next tutorial. Have a wonderful day, guys. Bye.